At the moment, what happens is, is that you're presented with a list of documents or a set of documents, and you're expected to just scan them and scroll them and, and basically make a decision as to whether you want to dive in or not. What you can't do is you can't really ask questions of the objects. Right? So my instinct is, is that over time, there will be developments that as you move around the information space, whatever technique you use, uh, you will interact with an object or a set of objects and the interaction will tell you uh, whether you really want to dive into those objects and explore the objects themselves in, in, in greater depth. That's the, that's the way I see search engines developing. There's a whole field of research um, on, on question answering rather than saying here are the documents that match your request, saying instead um, this is the answer to your question, this is the list of the things that, that you wanted um, to know about, um, this is the, a sentence that actually tells you the, you know, what is the population of China or um, who invented penicillin or whatever the question might be. And um, I th think there is um, potential in a lot of fields for exploiting that technology. Um, this is one of the, the first applications of natural language processing where in combination with information retrieval technology we're, um, we're actually seeing substantial benefit. It's actually um, the natural language processing techniques add definite value um, to the, the basic search algorithms. In Korea, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, two kinds of uh, uh, the search engine. Mm -hmm. One of them is those uh, uh, Westerns coming from the uh, Western civilization, mm -hmm. like a Google, mm -hmm. which is very much those are texture of those are search, mm -hmm. and uh, those are Korean those are search engine is very different. Mm -hmm. It's more sort of a, you search the knowledge, mm -hmm. and uh, so the, what happened is uh, uh, Google is not doing well mm -hmm. in Korea because you have to do the, a lot of those search, you know, to find out what you want. But the Korean search engine is, is very much, those are, you may call this user-friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, you sort of search at the level of those uh, uh, knowledge. And I guess the same thing will happen to the uh, patent area. One of the major issues is uh, uh, to break down any uh, kind of monopolistic uh, position in that domain because access to the information is too critical either for you know, professionals and also for uh, the general public. One of the major effects uh, of the evolution of the domain uh, would be a larger variety, a larger variety and a better coverage of the, of the web in mm -hmm. general because uh, the public uh, often ignores that, that uh, most uh, retrieval engines they have, a, they have a, a quite a restricted cover. Mm -hmm. A few percent of the available pages are effectively accessible mm -hmm. in the web. The best avenue for the future is greater semantic understanding of the, of the person's information need um, and uh, better semantic understanding of, of the documents. But how much of that's achievable and over what time scale, I think is um, very much an open question. If you learn how to learn, then you can learn any amount of new information that comes along. Especially in an area such as uh, intellectual property rights or in an area such as technology, which is very fast moving, it's extremely important for you to understand how to learn to learn so that as technology evolves, you are able to keep pace with the new technology. Uh, if you don't know how to learn to learn, then you will become a piece of furniture. If you read the literature on uh, how children are uh, learning certain things, they learn things through gaming. So although many adults, including myself actually, have a tendency to uh, despise uh, games you know, on, on, the, on the computer, there is no doubt that certain, certain things are learnt much more quickly through being able to play games right, that, that involve, if you like, you know, uh, learning a particular process. Right? Simulations. So, simulations. So another way, way of talking about uh, what I'm thinking about is, 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 is to, to, to set up your interaction with, with a document as a sort of a game. Yeah, that's right. It will very strongly affect 
the way people learn. Yeah. The Wikipedia, for example, I mean, in my opinion, that's far better than Encyclopedia Britannica ever was because it's, it's constantly being updated. It includes far um, a broader range of, uh, of inclusion material. It's searchable, um, it's hyperlinked. Um, there are just so many ways in which the, um, the online free resource is better than the, um, the authoritative book um, constructed by experts. This uh, statement from the PhD student, they say, okay, I don't, I don't need, need to, I don't need to go to the library because everything is on Google. Okay, which is completely wrong. Uh, they tend to favor, for example, the easy access uh, to the truth. No matter how good the tools are, in the end, you have to make your own mind up. Mm. And perhaps that's another lesson for education of the future is that the skills that we can teach people about being critical and having their own point of view and making their mind up based on lots of different evidence and so on become more and more important. Mm -hmm. So the quality assurance, uh, knowing which source to you know, trust and which source not to trust, will become part of learning to learn.